Shakespeare Network Self-Led Learning Audio-Visual Series A Companion to Shakespeare's Soliloquies and Monologues Introduction The Differentiation Between a Soliloquy and a Monologue In summary, soliloquies are internal reflections made in isolation, while monologues are speeches directed at others within the story. The main difference between a soliloquy and a monologue lies in the audience and context. A soliloquy is a speech where a character is alone on stage, or believes they are alone, and expresses their innermost thoughts directly to themselves or the audience. It reveals the character's private emotions, conflicts, and motivations without addressing other characters. A monologue is a long speech delivered by a character to other characters or directly to the audience, but in the presence of other characters on stage. It is typically part of a dialogue or interaction, though it can be addressed to the audience in some cases. Othello A companion to Desdemona's monologues Desdemona, a central figure in Shakespeare's Othello, does not engage in any formal soliloquies. Nevertheless, she delivers several significant monologues throughout the play, which, though spoken in the presence of others, offer profound insight into her character, emotions, and internal conflicts. First monologue, Act 1, Scene 3. Context. Desdemona speaks to the Venetian Senate, explaining her love for Othello, justifying her marriage to him. This speech highlights her strength and autonomy as she defends her choice despite the societal pressures. Key lines, that I did love the more to live with him, my downright violence and storm of fortunes may trumpet to the world, my heart subdued, even to the very quality of my lord. Significance, this speech establishes Desdemona's courage and loyalty. She passionately describes how Othello's stories of valor moved her, and her words emphasize her love and dedication. Her eloquence and honesty challenge the gender norms of her time. My noble father, I do perceive here a divided duty. To you I am bound for life and education. My life and education both do learn me how to respect you. You are the lord of duty. I am hitherto your daughter. But here's my husband. And so much duty as my mother showed to you, preferring you before her father. So much I challenge that I may profess due to the moor, my lord. God be with you. I had done none to the affairs of state. Most gracious duke, to my unfolding lend a prosperous ear, and let me find a charter in your voice to assist my simpleness. What would you speak? That I did love the moor to live with him, my downright violence and storm of fortunes may trumpet to the world. My heart subdued even to the utmost pleasure of my lord. I saw Othello's visage in his mind, and to his honors and his valiant parts did I my soul and fortunes consecrate. So that, dear lords, if I be left behind a moth of peace, and he go to the war, the rights for why I love him are bereft me. And I, a heavy interim, shall support by his dear absence. Let me go with him. I do beseech you, let her have your voice. Touch with me, heaven, I therefore beg it not to please the palate of my appetite, but to be free and bounteous of her mind. Second monologue, Act 4, Scene 2. Context. Desdemona, bewildered and heartbroken, confronts Othello about his sudden mistrust and accusations of infidelity. She pleads for understanding and mercy, unaware of Iago's manipulation. Key lines. 
Upon my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. Significance. This monologue reflects Desdemona's confusion and innocence. It emphasizes the tragic irony of the situation. Desdemona is completely unaware of Othello's misunderstanding and continues to express her unwavering love and loyalty. Let me see your eyes. Look in my face! What horrible face. Some of your function, mistress. Leave procreants alone and shut the door. Cough or cry him if anybody come. Your mystery, your mystery, no dispatch. On my knees, what doth your speech import? I understand a fury in your words, but not the words. Why? What art thou? Your wife, my lord, your true and loyal wife. Come, spirit, <gasps> damn myself! Lest being like one of heaven, the devils themselves should fear to seize thee. Therefore be double damned, swear that thou art honest. Oh, heaven does truly know it. Heaven truly knows that thou art false as hell. To whom, my lord, with whom, how am I false? <laughs> That's <laughs> the heavy day. Why do you weep? Am I the occasion of these tears, my lord? Have it pleased heaven to try me with afflictions? Third monologue, Act 4, Scene 2. Context. Desdemona, heartbroken by Othello's accusations of infidelity, desperately seeks answers from Iago, believing him to be a trusted friend. She cannot understand why her husband, whom she loves so deeply, now believes her to be unfaithful. Key lines. Alas, Iago, what shall I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him, for by this light of heaven I know not how I lost him. Here, I kneel. Significance, desperation, innocence, and vulnerability. This monologue reflects Desdemona's tragic flaw, which is her unwavering trust in those around her. She turns to Iago for help, unaware of his villainy. This adds layers to the tragedy, as she unknowingly seeks advice from the very person responsible for her suffering. Some scurvy fellow. Speak within doors! Oh, fire upon him. Some such squire was that turned your wit to see me side without and made you suspect me with them all. Oh, go to go. Oh, good Iago, what can I do to win my lord again? Good friend, go to him. For by this light of heaven I know not how I lost him. Here I kneel. If e'er my will did trespass against his love, either in discourse or thought or actual deed, or that mine eyes, mine ears, or any sense delighted them in any other form, or that I do not yet and ever did and ever will, though he do shake me off to beggarly divorcement, love him dearly. Comfort, forswear me. Unkindness may do much, and his unkindness may defeat my life, but never taint my love. I cannot say... Oh, it doth abhor me now I speak the word to do the act that might the addition earn not the world's mass of vanity could make me. Fourth monologue, act four, scene three, which includes the Willow Song. Context. The night before her death, Desdemona sings the melancholic Willow Song, which serves as a poignant reflection of her inner sorrow and her resignation to fate. Key lines. The poor soul sat sighing by a sycamore tree, sing all, a green willow, her hand on her bosom, her head on her knee, sing willow, willow, willow. Significance. This moment, though not a formal monologue, is one of quiet resignation. The song foreshadows her tragic end, and through it, Desdemona reflects on loyalty, sorrow, and loss. It captures her growing sense of fatalism, 
a final emotional reflection before her death. My mother had a maid called Barbara. She was in love. And he she loved proved mad and did forsake her. She had a song of willow. Oh, an old thing it was, but it expressed her fortune. And she died singing it. That song tonight will not go from my mind. I have much to do but go hang my head all on one side and sing it like poor Barbara. Privy dispatch. Shall I go fetch your nightgown? Oh, no. Unpin me here. This Lodovico is a proper man. <laughs> a very handsome man. He speaks well. I knew a lady in Venice who'd walk barefoot to Palestine for a touch of his nether lip. Oh, poor soul, sad sign, by a sycamore tree, sing all a green willow, her hand on her bosom, her head on her knee. The fresh streams ran by her and murmured her moans. Sing all a green willow, her salt tears fell from her, which softened the stones. Lay by these. Prithee, hide thee, he'll come anon. Let nobody blame him. His scorn I approve. Hey, that's not next. Hark, who is that knocks? No, it is the wind. I called my love false love. And what said he then? Sing all a green willow. If I caught more women, you'll couch with more men. So, get thee gone. Mine eyes do itch. Does that bode weeping? Oh, it's neither here nor there. Oh, I've heard it said so. Oh, these men. These men. Fifth monologue and Desdemona's final words. Act 5, Scene 2. Context. After being smothered by Othello, Desdemona's dying words express her love and forgiveness, even as she refuses to blame Othello for her death. Key lines. Nobody, I myself, farewell. Commend me to my kind lord, oh, farewell. Significance. Desdemona's final lines solidify her character as one of tragic innocence and unwavering loyalty. Even in death she chooses to protect Othello, absolving him of blame, which adds to the tragic pathos of the play. Falsely. Falsely murdered. Lord, what drives that? I need to ah! Help! Help! Oh, lady. Lady, speak again. Sweet Desdemona. Oh, sweet lady, speak. The guilt is death. I die. But who has done this deed? Nobody. I myself. Commend me to my kind lord. <sighs> For further resources, including critical editions, full texts, downloads, and all sorts of companions to Shakespeare, 
please visit our website at shakespearenetwork.net. We greatly value your engagement and invite you to consider subscribing to our channel. Thank mm -hmm. you.